Today I would like to try to explain you about synthesizers. I'm going to be using Helm synthesizer because it's free and because I really love it. It's very versatile and it can basically do everything that you need it to do. Let's start trying to understand what a synthesizer is and why we need them. Most synthesizers that we're used to using are subtractive synthesizers, which mean that they generate a note, which we then subtract from until we have a pleasant sound, a sound that we like. So the way that we generate notes to subtract from with a synthesizer is by using a oscillator. What an oscillator do is that it generates waveforms in the pitch that you decide. So when you're for example playing an A, then it will generate 440 hertz waves. The oscillator sounds are these. Sine, sine wave, triangle, square, saw, saw, three step, four step, I, these are not some of those I use very much. What I mostly just use is the saw. When I started using synthesizers, I thought that the whole magic about synthesizers was how the oscillators was generating a sound that sounded awesome, but it's not. So in this episode, we are only going to be using the triangle. And to be honest, you really don't need much more than the triangle because with the triangle you can do most of all synthesizer sounds. We have an oscillator which is generating now a triangle sound. Which sounds terrible, I think. But to understand a bit more about how the sound is generated, then you need to understand that even though I'm not pressing a note, the oscillator is always generating this note. So the way that we have our attack and release and basically the way that we shape the volume is by using an amplitude envelope. So what are we actually doing when we are hitting the key is that it says like on and then we are when we are lifting then it turns down the volume but the oscillator is always generating sound. So what we are doing now is that we are subtracting audio using the volume. When we are hitting the note, we are turning the volume up and when we are lifting it again, then we are turning it down. AKA, we are shaping the volume to make a sound which hopefully will turn out to be something that we like. And this leads into the next very important chapter of synthesizers, an envelope generator. So what is an envelope generator? I would like to describe it as a small man who has some task to do when the player is hitting a key. So basically now when I'm hitting the key, this envelope generator, this small man turns up the volume and when I'm letting go of the key, he turns it down again. So like on, off. So this small man, he has like this simple task that every time I hit a note, he turns up the volume and turns it down again. But he can actually do more complex stuff. The envelope generator has four knobs that you can turn. ADSR, which stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain and Release. And these are extremely important to understand. So what attack means is how fast does the man turn up the volume from 0 to 100% when I'm hitting a key. So now it takes him 0 seconds to react, which means it's just instantly on. But we can also say that he should spend 4 seconds turning it from 0 to 4. So now it will fade in. And you can actually also see it here. So now the man, aka the envelope generator, is slowly turning up the volume. So the attack decides how fast does it take to go from 0 to 100%. Then we have the decay and the sustain which works together. The sustain is the level from when we have reached 100%. What's the next level we are going to? So for example, if we say uh, 0%, then when we reach 100%, which will take us now 4 seconds, then afterwards, then we will go to 0%. Decay. How long does it take us to go from 100 to our sustain level, which is now 0%? And we can say 4 seconds as well. So what this means is now that our envelope generator will now use 4 seconds 
turning from zero to 100%, and then when we reach 100%, start turning down to zero again, using four seconds from 100 to zero. Let's try. So turning up, now down. So the decay decides how long time it takes from 100 to our sustain level, and our sustain level is where we are going to fall down to. Let's try to use it in another way. I set the attack to zero, which means that when I hit the key, right away we are at 100%, which also means that right away we start our decay time descending to our sustain level. And now I'm gonna have a slow sustain, but not zero, but now we have like 0 0.25, which means, let's try. Which means that we actually gain some attack, so it's a doom. So now it's behaving more like a piano or a bass string or a guitar string or basically anything that doesn't go on forever. The last R, which stands for release, which decides when I'm letting go of the key, how long does it take to go from where I am at to zero. So at zero, when I'm letting go of the keys, we are just gonna experience silence. And that's not always very nice because that can be very rough, harsh. So I can set it for like uh, three seconds. So now when I'm letting go, then we are turning it down slowly. Attack means how long it takes to go from zero to 100%. Decay means how long does it take to go from 100% to sustain level. S is sustain level, which we are gonna remain on until we let go of the key. And release is from the level where we are at. How long does it take to go from that to zero? And I think you should just sit down and try to experiment. As you can see here, it's called amplitude envelope. Actually, an envelope generator doesn't make any sound. It only shapes sound by you connecting it to something. But in this instance, the amplitude envelope generator is already connected to the volume. And that's why we are now controlling the volume. The envelope generator can actually control everything, but we will come back to that later. Oscillators makes endless waveforms, which is in tune with what we are playing. The envelope generator is controlling the volume and in that way shaping our note, deciding when it starts and when it ends and how it behaves. What more can we do? The first thing I do when I turn on the Helm synthesizer is basically to turn on the filter. And what is a filter? It's basically just like an equalizer. Equalizers is a unit full of filters. Let's try without. With. So let's look at some of the basic settings with the filter. In the bottom, it has its cutoff, filter cutoff, which decides how much should we cut off and how much should we remain so if i take it all the way down then we only have the low end until i open it up more and then we get the full sound and to the right we have the filter resonance which is the f resonance in the filter and we can control that by turning it up or down and that again shapes the sound of our source. For me, it's already much more pleasant. Another really important thing to take into account is that we have like the 12 and the 24, which is the shaping of the filters. 
and they just sound differently. And synthesizers are all about the filter and how they sound. So we need to try them out, and every time we do something, try them out also. So the 12 dB filter are more open. Let's try the 24. And for me, the 24 dB filters somehow sounds more vintage and uh, less digital somehow. Why? I have no clue. And I don't think it's true. But that's just how it affects me. So now we are shaping the oscillator sound with the amplitude by turning on and off the volume. And we are filtering the sound with a filter. And you can hear, and you can hear when I when I adjust it while I'm playing. It actually sounds pretty cool, and it, it kind of creates this new sound. And now my question is: Do we have a unit, some kind of thing that can control the cutoff filter? Yes, we do. And again, it's a envelope generator. And in this instance, we have the filter envelope, which is yet another man controlling the cutoff filter. The way that we turn on the filter envelope is by opening up envelope depth. When I open up the envelope depth completely, it means when the filter envelope generator is at 100, then the filter is completely open. And when the envelope generator, when it's in zero, it's where I set it to be. So let's try. Now it's, the attack time is zero, which means that when I hit a key, it will go to 100 right away. So 100 right away means that we open the filter right away. Let's try to hear. And then our sustain level is zero and our decay is kind of fast. So what it does, it's when I hit the key right away, it opens up and then it takes, let's see how many seconds, 2.4 seconds to go to 0%, which is where we set our cutoff filter. And the seconds really doesn't match reality, I think. But it's a good indicator. Let's try to have a shorter decay. So now it's going to be right. Let's try to make this sound without using the envelope generator. So. So it, at first, opens up completely. So you can hear that the filter envelope generator is basically just controlling the filter cutoff. So again, this small guy sitting inside of Helm synthesizer, and he's told to turn the filter cut off completely open when I hit the key and turn it down very fastly. Let's try to make another filter, which is maybe more suitable for a pad. So we have the sustain completely open and uh, then we use the attack to kind of like make this evolving sound. Maybe I should do it a bit faster. Yes. Ah, I forgot to turn on the envelope depth. So you can hear it opens up slowly and you can actually watch the screen here telling you how it does it. But let's go through the decay and sustain again, because when the sustain is at 100%, then the decay time doesn't do anything, because the decay time decides how long time it takes from it when it has reached 100%, how long it takes to go to sustain level. But when the sustain level is also 100%, then there's really nowhere, no travel distance for the decay. So no matter what you put the decay at, it doesn't make a difference when the sustain level is at a hundred percent. We 
You could also just make it very fast. We haven't really done much, but now the sound has already changed a lot. And this is how synthesizers works. It's not because it's generating some amazing sounding sound. But what we do is that we have this basic sound which an oscillator generates and then we modify it until we have this amazing sounding sound. The next thing that we use to control different buttons is the LFO. We can assign this to control almost anything in the helm by pressing this helm logo and then turning the knob that I want to control. So let's try to control the tune. I hit the tune and then I turn up the mouse. And you can see the more I do it, the more it affects the tune. I will oversaturate it now. So now when I play, the LFO is controlling the tune. And how can we modify the LFO? Just like the oscillator, it has different waveforms. So we choose them by pressing here. And exactly the same as the main oscillators. And then it has the tempo in which it's modulating. So I can choose to have it in seconds instead. Which I really like when I wanted to have like character, especially with tune. And now we are modulating the tune way too much. But luckily there is a really nice function that we can use to make it modulated less with without having to press the this logo and dial it down. What we can do is simply by turning down the amplitude of the waveform. So now... <laughs> I like this sound. The LFO can control anything and in itself doesn't make any audio. But what else can we control with an LFO? Let's try to control the volume. So I will just go to the volume and say, yes, you turn up and down the volume here. So basically we just made a tremolo. What else can we control? Basically everything that turns green we can control. So we can also control the filter cutoff. Let's do it, uh, try to do it very fast. I like the sound, but maybe a bit too much. So by generating a very fast LFO, we really added something unique. And I really like it. Another important thing which I often see people uh, not understanding is the voices, which basically means how many notes can you play at once. By default it's set to four, which means if I play five voices, so one, two, three, four, five. Now the first note isn't playing any longer because it's instead playing the fifth note. But I can just turn it up and now I can play 32 voices at the same time.
This is very useful, for example, when you're making a bass, because basses most often only play one note, and if they play more than one note, then it often sounds very muddy. So now I can play multiple notes without it getting muddy. Another very nice use is I can add a very long release time if I, for example, know I'm only playing three voices at the time, because I can play three notes, and when I play three more, then it will mute the first three, no matter how long the release time is. Maybe this doesn't make sense now, but it eventually will. This synthesizer has three oscillators which generate sounds. Therefore, it also has a mixer that is controlling the volume of the three separate oscillators. We have one oscillator here, one here, and then this sub-oscillator. And as you can see, it's called oscillator one, two, and sub. Let's try to turn up the sub. The sub oscillator is basically a square way, one octave down. Let's just con turn up the voices. So it adds an octave beneath our main oscillator. But we can also turn up the second oscillator, which is basically the same oscillator as the first, besides one thing, because in the second we haven't made the LFO control the tune, which means that now we are going to have one oscillator in tune and one not in tune. And that makes a nice sound too. It makes like this face sound. Let's do it with a clean. So here. Now both oscillators are playing and if we change the tune of just one. So without any detuning, with detuning. What I often do when I want to detune it is that I detune the one a bit above and the other one a bit below. So eight down, eight cents up. So this is a way of making the sound sound more fat or more 80s alike. I think. But again, it's very important to understand the mixer. Often when I make sounds, I actually only use one oscillator. So the first thing I do is to turn down oscillator 2. Another thing that you can use two different oscillators to do is mixing different square waves. I don't think this is very important, but sometimes I add a sine wave to my square wave to add a bit of low end bass. And I could also transpose it down. But I don't think that this is very important at all, but now you know. But let's go back to the filter resonance. What I want to show you is how it sounds when I use the filter envelope. So I will turn up the envelope depth and uh, turn up the resonance. And I will have a even faster decay. So this sound is generated by the filter, which is say wah 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 wah, 
with a very steep resonance. Let's try to uh, remove the resonance and add it again. And we can make it travel even more. Remember when the envelope death is at 100% then the envelope opens from here and goes to where I set it. We can also make it go up fast and then down at the same rate as now. Maybe do it a bit. And again, just by doing this, this sound is like so much changed. And again, the sound is only this, but with the filter doing its thing. It's all about just trying and doing different things and for example for one month make a new sound every day where you do something completely new. I think this is the best way of learning. I'm gonna show you some examples of what you can try to do just to get you started. I'm not trying to make something that sounds awesome, I'm only trying to awake your creativity by giving you some ideas to what you can do. One thing that I always do myself, which I kind of wants to escape from is by having the out of tune thing. I know that a lot of people hate me from doing this, but uh, I don't care. Because I really love it and uh, when I love it then it's, I need to do it. For me it just makes the sound more analog. So. I'm controlling the tune with the LFO. And remember that you can use the different waveforms. For example, you can also use the random waveform. Then you can use the mod envelope, which isn't hardwired to anything, to for example control the depth of an LFO. So if I turn this up even more, then by assigning it to controlling the depth of the LFO, I will make it fade the depth of the LFO, controlling the tune. Up. So the longer I play the note, the more the LFO 1 will control how much it affects the tune. And this was too much, so I will just dial it down how much the LFO is controlling the tune. Which again is just the imagination because you can control what controls something with something that controls that. And then you get out to like these like, oh nice ideas. And then as I showed you before, uh, you can control the volume with an LFO. Let's try to use another waveform. And because it starts to get rhythmic, I will use a tempo. Maybe too fast. So that's another thing you can do. You can make an envelope control the sub volume. So basically it will fade in the sub. So
You can have the LFO set to very fast and control something which is going to make it sound crazy. So we can make this 12 semi notes. <laughs> and make crazy sounds. Except if we uh, add some reverb. So this was an accident, but it really sounds nice because now we are also fading in the sub. And it just brings something that I've never heard or experienced before. And that's that's what I love about synthesizer is that I can just play around and suddenly there is something that inspires me to do something. Imagine a beat to this sound. It could be extremely nice. When I right click it, uh, then I can press disconnect to any devices, which is a very handy feature. We can control a LFO with another LFO. So basically, I can control the, the rate of the first with the rate of the second. So this was a short introduction, even though it's maybe a bit long. But what I really want you to know is that the synthesizer is not something that generates very awesome sounds, but it's something that generates a sound that you then shape into an amazing sound. And there is really only one way to learn, and that's by doing. So sit down and do one sound a day for like 30 days and always try to do something differently. By assigning the envelope generators and the LFO to something different that you haven't tried before, or by turning on the distortion, the format, the stutter, or one of all of the other buttons that we haven't touched. I hope that I have inspired you to do some synthesizing yourself. And if you like this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and consider to subscribe to my channel. Enjoy.